you guys. Sunday in Coolum. Another awesome day. Just been listening to Joe Rogan on on his podcast. Give it a listen sometime if you haven't. It's, uh, he's funny as and he's really sharp. Um, yeah, I just got into part podcast uh, recently. Um, only because I've got a lot more time than I used to have. I'm, I'm not much of a reader, and um, yeah, it's just good listening to those conversations. Uh, so yesterday I did a bit of Dow analysis, uh, and I also um, checked my my, my FX book um, and realised that it doesn't update on um, Saturday morning because the broker's server closes down with the market closing on Saturday morning. So if you do go to my FX at the end of the week just to um, check out my weekly return it won't be what I've claimed on the on the Saturday morning video but um, uh, when I made the video it was up to 35 and on close it actually increased a little bit more so it may have actually hit 40% for the week but I'm happy with 30 and I think anybody would be um, so yeah, Dow analysis was really interesting. Um, I essentially did some technical analysis on it, um, looking at the monthly and running some MAs, and um, put those up on Patreon uh, for people that want to want to join Patreon and have a have a look at Dow. <coughs> I mentioned on Saturday that you know October can be a risky month for Dow. Um, or equities of any type anywhere in the world um, not exactly sure why September and October have been I may have looked at it in the past but it's just not coming to me um, as to why there may be something in the numbers maybe something in the psychology um, you know there's certainly something in the psychology of a decade and and the credit cycle which they call the business cycle uh, that they use to their advantage, they being the bankers. Um, you know, just swap hands, put these keys in my pocket. Yeah, so um, I'm walking down to uh, a dog beach that we've got got here in Coolum. Um, everybody lo loves their dogs, um, as they do throughout the Western world. And um, in Queensland, we've got, and probably in the US they have as well, um, you know, beaches, yeah, beaches, beaches in which people can take their dogs off the lead and give them a good run and play. Uh, I was down there last week, but I don't think I showed you the dog beach, so. There's a lot of people check out this van. There's a lot of um, people living in vans in Queensland. Um, we have a, a big population of of what we call backpackers, um, usually European kids, French, Germans. Um, they'll come out, grab a van. Um, they'll hit Sydney, and they'll basically drive up to Queensland, do some some picking work or um, yeah they'll work work with a farmer and um, I'm not exactly how sure it all works but it's a program and it's run for quite a while um, so you get a lot of vans like that in Queensland for, you know from Sydney to Byron Bay is their first stop so Byron's just really busy I think they have a million people go through the little town of Byron every year a million tourists and uh, most of them rock up in a van and sleep the night and uh, you know stealth camp which is um, what they call it in the US we don't have any and they also call it boondocking but we don't have any sort of terms for it 
uh, really it's it's something that um, I don't know, Aussies don't really acknowledge it they they tend to think that um, if you do it you're either a backpacker or you're down on your luck so they tend to sort of overlook it uh, some councils get really antsy about it and they'll run around at six o'clock in the morning trying to trying to find people and move people on and you know it's just all pretty crazy it's all pretty small-minded considering we've got a country the size of the US with only 30 million people in it so there's heaps of room but you know local councils are all about rate pay, protecting ratepayers and um, you know making sure nobody encringes on their on their world and their lifestyle you know so yeah going down to this um dog beach um just to chill out being a sunday um put the feet in the water get myself grounded um it's really important i think uh, it's really important as a trader uh when you can be so sort of screen bound and uh you know it is a well, it can be a fairly solitary existence that um you know, you use the time you've got uh, wisely to stay in touch with nature. You know, make sure you get in a river once a week and take your shoes off. My shoes are hardly ever on. But, um, yeah, make sure you're grounded. Uh, in my opinion, that's one of the reasons... Um, well, being not grounded, I think, is one of the reasons for uh, people being depressed these days feeling disconnected and um, feeling like a suburban lifestyle doesn't suit them doesn't surprise me at all um, suburbia really suits local governments and and um, child rearing women uh, more than any anyone else well it's safe for, for children as well and it's it's not being critical of um, you know, women that want children. Um, I'm very supportive of um, the family unit and nuclear family, and you know, to me, that's the essence of everything. I'm more supportive of that than I am feminism. Um, but don't, you know, I won't go down that path. Um, yeah. So, but you know, the suburban plan really needs to be redesign uh, that disconnects people far too much with fences and you know no local community hub and um, people being isolated and just getting into wars and battles over small things like parking and uh, you know we, we replaced a fence in Melbourne and it took us a year and a half to replace a 40 year old fence just because we had a belligerent neighbour and um, we just gave, gave, the, um, gave the task to a solicitor and because we just couldn't negotiate with the guy and he just picked up on every little aspect of, of the, um, the, the task at hand. When we finally got, it, got a, a fence guy in, he, you know, he took no more than two or three days and yet it had taken that long just to get the thing replaced people like that when people are behaving like that you really you seriously got to ask yourself whether um, you know what's wrong with the, the system of living uh, living in large houses separated from each other um, being materially focused and um, you know not getting not 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 having a connection with nature and the earth, uh, being earth, and um, not, yeah, and it's essentially that connection chills you out. Um, it reminds you of who you are and where you belong. You know, it, it, it gives you a, a reset in terms of your own importance, which um, some people tend to elevate in their lives, I think.
you know, and it leads to all sorts of personal problems, relationship problems, and, you know, then you've got finances and so forth. And um, the ship can easily go down. So, about nearly, nearly there at this beach. It's a nice little walk. Yeah, so um, over, over the years I've really questioned uh, the way we live. I've lived um, in suburbs, I've lived in a city, Melbourne, um, lived in a unit, lived in a, a three or four bedroom house, renovated them all, lived in a shop, and um, yeah, it really, happiness is the most important thing you can find in life and enjoy in life and achieve in life, it's the most important thing. Feeling connected to yourself, feeling um, comfortable in your own skin, with your gen within your own gender. Um, you know, there's a lot of attacks on on the male gender these days from all all sides, but mainly from the left, and um, that's been allowed to seep into our schools and universities and media and entertainment. Thanks very much, government. I mean, the last Father's Day in Australia here was hijacked by a same-sex marriage um, argument, political campaign, and, you know, there's not really a time or place in media where men are respected, not even celebrated, but just even respected. And um, that really pisses me off because... Most of us are, um, are better fathers than what our fathers were. You know, we, we put more time and more effort and more thought into it. And um, it really pisses me off that all those changes have been made in our generation and they're not even recognised. And, um, and uh, you know, yeah. That's so I lost my train of thought. I was just going to add to that, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's a big long topic, and probably said about as much as I, I should on it. And um, yeah, I've got a 18 year old daughter who lives in Melbourne, and I haven't um, had contact with her for uh, uh, or seen her face to face for two and a half years now. And um, before going through the Family Court of Australia, we were. We were very close, we had good contact, you know, we were, I was picking her up from school every day, dropping her off on a bike and, you know, we, we'd play Scrabble and, you know, I was investing in her future because I wanted her to be a smart, a smart girl. Um, I didn't really care about fashion and, and uh, you know, her looks and whether she was... A pretty girl or not, I was interested in her intellectual and mental uh, health and um, her financial knowledge as well, her ability to be independent if she wanted to, but also, um, yeah, just be a smart, a smart kid. But um, you know, there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of people attacking men these days and um, it's important to be aware of it, it really is, if you're not, um, well most of us aren't until it's too late and um, a lot of us find ourselves trapped in a situation, a relationship or financial situation in which um, we can't make the changes that we want and we no longer have the authority that we, we should have, so um, you know. It's not a good thing, guys, and what you need to do is look after yourself financially. You need to make sure that if you are attacked uh, while being in a relationship or having kids, you need to be able to uh, fight a good fight because the, um, the odds are stacked up against you. Uh, they certainly have been in Australia for probably 30 or 40 years, and um, you know, the government acknowledges it, 
and uh, only last week says it's going to do something about it. But um, whenever you've got lawyers involved and it's an adversarial system, you won't see any changes for, you know, give it a decade at least. Probably take them a decade to acknowledge it and then, you know, m you know, suggest some changes and then they might come in and then culturally they need to be adopted. So, you know, you've always got to have uh, the financial resources that you deserve and you need to fight if you're attacked uh, on a personal relationship level or through a court because um, you're going to need 50, 60 grand just to get a, a decent hearing. If you don't have that sort of money, you won't get a fair hearing. The whole thing will just be about attacking you personally on a personal level. And um, they'll either try and um, make you out to be bad or mad. So keep that in mind, guys. And when you're thinking about trading, so um, yeah, if you want to check out my my Dow thoughts um, join me on patreon uh, I did a bit of chart work this morning and um, yeah the chart is looking really really good really good for the trend so um, get in touch with me best thing will be to hit me up on Skype ROG Rog dot Blackwell as it sounds catch you soon